Welcome to Alpine Garage Sports, folks. Above me here, we have Ralphie running at the Nebraska game. You guys all saw that either in person or on Fox Sports. I just wanted to show it again because I can't see Ralphie run enough, quite honestly. So this is a wrap-up video of the CU Nebraska game. From my perspective, Alpine Garage Sports, Chris. I'm your host, Chris, by the way. And I was on campus for 19 hours. Simply amazing. And quite honestly, I had so much fun. It started with a near riot and it ended with a beer and a football game. And I want to show you everything in between. So first of all, I got there right at about four o'clock in the morning, knowing where Big Noon Kickoff was. You could hear the kids in line. And at the time, I didn't know that they were all in line at the point, but I heard the cheering going on. And so this is the beginning of the day. 4.30 in the morning, and we're headed to the Big Noon Kickoff pregame. Starts at five o'clock. I can already hear people cheering. It's gonna be awesome. Should be right over here. Let's go take a look. Now, as I got closer to the cheering, closer to Farron Field, I noticed that the line had grown to probably somewhere around 750 to 1,000 students. And it looked somewhat orderly. So, you know, no one was out there shaping the line. These very intelligent students created their own line. They kept their own line. They had turned it. I jumped in line with the other students and, and I didn't get to film a lot of talking to them, but all of them were excited to be up. Some of them had just rolled out of bed. Some of them had been up all night drinking. But as soon as I was in line, the conversation very quickly turned to the fact that the folks in line where I was didn't think that they were gonna get the free cowboy hats that they were handing out to the first 500 people in line to go into Farron Field. You could tell the tension there. You know, when you're not getting a free felt cowboy hat, there starts to be a lot of anticipation and anxiety, right? At that point, I knew when they were going to bust that line, if there wasn't anybody that was going to be controlling that, that it was going to be crazy. So I turned on the camera and that's exactly what happened. As soon as the gates opened to Farron Field, letting the students onto the field, it just went, everybody just broke the line and just started running as fast as they could to the line. And everybody was losing their minds because they wanted to get a free cowboy hat. Obviously, I'm not going to run with them. I wanted to get them coming by me. Got onto Farron Field, and I was literally like five people away from getting a cowboy hat. So all of those people in line would have gotten one anyway if they had just stayed there. But, you know, that's just how things go. It's fun. It's an exciting atmosphere. We are not used to this in Boulder, Colorado. The last time we really had a major show like this was ESPN had college game day in 1996. None of these kids were born within eight years of ESPN being their last. It's just a super exciting time. And then this coming week with both Big Noon Kickoff and ESPN showing up, it's going to be even bigger than that. And at some time this year, I'm pretty sure we're going to get used to it, but right now we're not. And that's how my day got started. And then you make it to the actual stage of the Big Noon Kickoff, and it was absolutely lit. If you, I'm going to show you, if you have not seen the live that I have on my channel, I'm going to put it down in the description. In fact, all of the videos that I did that day that I'm going to be referencing are going to be down in the description. So make sure you go down there and watch those. But the live that morning was unbelievable. These students were just on another level. And the Fox team did a great job pumping them up even more. It was funny. It was fun. They had a DJ there, the DJ. And I don't remember her name, but man, she was freaking awesome. It was like a little bit of a nightclub there for about three hours. It was pretty, pretty intense. And because ESPN is going to be there this weekend, and I'm going to be putting out another video on this, but Fox Big Noon is going to be at eight o'clock in the morning on the same field, Farron Field as it was last time. ESPN is gonna get an hour jump on them and it's gonna be at the grassy area right in front of the Leeds School of Business, which is where I did a live from last time too and I'll put that link down. So you can kind of see that's, that's a big field and but there's no barriers to it. So I don't know if they're gonna fence it off or how that's gonna happen. That kicks off at seven o'clock. 
And yours truly is going to be there as early as two or three o'clock in the morning to get all of the anticipation and build up just like I did at Fox Big Noon Kickoff. So keep that in mind. I'll probably go live somewhere around four in the morning. So that's four mountains. That's probably when I'm going to start my live. So make sure you put your notification bells on so that you can see those. And I'm going to be jumping back and forth between the two in the morning. Fox Big Noon and ESPN, and we're gonna bring you all that footage. And Yahoo Sports actually picked up one of my pictures of the line before the students got into Fair and Field and put it on their national account. So hey, first time being credited with one of my pictures, I've made it. Now, at that point, I went straight down to Folsom Field because I wanted to get the tailgates. Now, there are two main tailgates outside of the small tailgates that you see in the parking lots. There's two main tailgates at CU. The first one is Dwayne Field. And the reason why I say first one, that's the official tailgate of CU Athletics. And that's usually a very busy place. But as you can see here in this picture, there wasn't a lot going on there at, I think I came through 6.30 or 7 in the morning. It's normally a lot busier than that, but because of the Fox Big Noon kickoff going on, that's where everybody was. It drained, it literally drained the tailgates. But still the tailgates were fun. So then we headed past Wayne Field and we went to the stadium. And by that time, there was already lines to get into the stadium. The stadium didn't open for another hour. That is the anticipation that you see here. It's not normally like that at CU, guys. There aren't people lining up to get into the stadium three hours before the game starts. But this is what I was met with when I got there. Yeah! These students were absolutely jacked. Us CU buffs always have a level of pride and, and, and anticipation for our games, but it has never been at this level that I've ever seen. Then you had the casual fan, which is someone who didn't have tickets to the game, but they came out to see what all the hubbub was and to see what was going on and to see Big Noon kickoff and all this other stuff going on. But they had absolutely no tickets or anything else to get into the game. So they were there just to have. But then you go to Franklin Field, and Franklin Field is kind of the big tailgate. So Franklin Field is where a lot of businesses and big groups that have been at CU for a long time, they rent these tents that are basically already pre-built with coolers and everything else. It's really kind of top-notch. This is your upper echelon of tailgates. And we went there because Bus for Life is there. I went and visited them. There's several other companies and groups, organizations that are there as well that I wanted to run into some folks that I knew. And it was also the place where the buff walk was going to happen. So all the players were going to walk through there on their way to the facilities to get dressed and get out on the field and start warming up. Let's stop and grab a uh, Rocky Mountain fermented water before we finish this. And by the way, Coors, if you're looking to sponsor an up and coming CU YouTube channel, I'm available. And you can just pay me in product. So we're at Franklin Field and the tailgates. At that time, Bucky and Darius came through. So that was really cool being within feet. I've been within feet of Bucky before. I uh, ran into him when he was driving by in his car one day. So that's really exciting. And by the way, Bucky, if you're watching this, I still want to review your car. I love reviewing vehicles and reviewing you in that vehicle would be awesome. So everybody send some notes to Bucky and see if we can get that going. And then the buff walk happened. Now the magic of this buff walk was A, no buff walk that I have ever been to is this exciting or this anticipated. But the weird thing is, is that there were still a lot of people at Big Noon Kickoff. So although there were a ton of people there, it would have been, you know, probably five times that had we not had so many things going on on campus. But those guys received a lot of love. The coaches received a lot of love. Cheerleaders received a lot of love. And the band received a lot of love. And right in front of me, was Taja Alston's mom and Dylan Edwards' family as well. So I got to hang out with them and talk to them. They're super excited. This is what Dylan's family had to say to Dylan right before the game. We call him Boogie. Yeah, Boogie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Boogie. yeah. So Boogie's going to show out today? Oh, yeah. Let's yeah. go, Dylan. Let's go, Dylan. Let's go, Dylan. Let's go, Dylan. Let's go, Dylan. So as you can see, great family. And we just had such a great time. The guys coming through in their Michael Strahan suit, just looking sharp, engaging the fans, 
really kind of taken in this moment was just, it was surreal, really it was surreal, that you can get that close to the players. You know, a lot of these people had not had that opportunity yet. When I talked to them afterwards, they were just, they were on cloud nine that they got to see their, not only their series buffs, but their superstars, you know, because of all the media exposure. So what a great time. What a great, great time before the game. I mean, at this time, you're already in outer space. I mean, with all the big noon kickoff and all this other stuff going on in the tailgates and the buff walk, I mean, at that point, I could have gone home and been happy. But no, we still had a football game to play, and it was one of the biggest games we're going to have this year against one of our most hated rivals. So let's get to that. So we make it into the stadium, and one of the first things I notice is, is that we don't normally sell the stadium out, and we very rarely, if ever, like max it out to over 53,000 people. And you could feel it immediately. Like it is, I would say 50%, it felt 50% more crowded than most of the games that have been to in the last, let's say, decade. Moving from place to place was a little bit of effort. And here are some pictures of kind of what it looked like around the student section. The student section was by far the worst because you have all of the students coming in and out. You have everybody coming in on that side of the stadium. And then you have the bathrooms on either end. So everybody's moving from place to place. It wasn't near as bad on the opposite side of the field, on the west side of the field, as it was over on the east side of the field and on the south side of the field where the student section was. But it got to the point where it was, I'm not going to say that it was uncomfortable, but it was definitely you had to have a lot of patience. And everybody had a pretty good amount of patience on that. I also put out a video showing when I came out of the bathroom and I got stuck in the hallway for about 10 minutes because traffic was just not moving. So check that out down in the description as well. That was insane. So I finally made it to my seat, but I had only, uh, but I had only one, grabbed one of those Coors Tall Boys. So I knew I was in trouble at that point because I was going to have to get back down into the mosh pit and get back down and go get some Coors Lights, which I did later. I ended up buying two at one time, and that enabled me to get through the rest of the game without having to get out of my seat. But that's right about the time when the Air Force flew overhead. We did the national anthem. What an exciting time. Check this out. I mean, you can't kick off a game any better than that except for seeing Ralphie run. And that set it off. If the whole morning wasn't good enough, that made my day right there. And then on top of that, the student section was rocking the entire game, like unbelievably rocking. And the game was awesome. So we started off slow and it was a little bit concerning at that point because we really couldn't get our offense going. But at the same time, our defense kind of stood their ground and we really held Nebraska. And then as the game went on, and especially after the first half, we started gaining our stride. Shadur really took it into his own hands to really kind of get this game going and ended up with another stellar game. 32 of 44 for 396 yards. So darn near a 400-yard game, again, on top of a 510-yard game. Obviously in the top two, three in the Heisman race right now. And then it happened. With one second left on the scoreboard, the student section started rushing the field. They got them off pretty easily, ran the one second off because you know they just had to get this going, ran, run that second off. Everybody blew onto the field, and it was mayhem. And it was so fantastic to look at. I got out of my seat twice to go rush the field. And then I kept sitting down thinking, no, I want to enjoy this from the stands. I think I would rather just sit back and drink my beer and enjoy everybody else being on the field and just soaking up this win. And it felt so good in the sun there that I stayed until everyone was out of the stadium. I literally think I may have either been the last person out of the stadium, here are some picks, or I was one of maybe three or four people left when this thing was all said and done. I did not want to leave Folsom, guys. This season is a culmination of over 40 years for me. That 89, 90 through 94, and then you know a little bit here and there afterwards really filled me, but not to this extent. I wasn't ready to get up and walk out. 
I wanted to stay there as late as I could without being kicked out. And I was just about kicked out of that place. When I left, I decided to stop by the tailgates again and say goodbye to everybody. Went down, said goodbye to the players. About, about that time, they started all filing out. And lo and behold, I ran into a guy that I've been wanting to run into for 30 years, Michael Westbrook, one of my CU buff heroes. And I had never met him before. And he just happened to be out there, super engaging guy. Took a time to, to get a picture with him. And if it wasn't the big noon kickoff and all the excitement around that that morning, and then uh, all of the excitement around Darius and Bucky and the, and the buff walk and those guys coming in looking like they did, and then going into the game and having the Air Force fly over and having Ralphie run, first game this year at home, the way that we handled that game and just really showed up, hanging out afterwards and just soaking up Folsom, and then going out and meeting my hero. If that weren't enough, I walked around campus and just talked to people. I didn't carry a camera with me because, you know, at that time I was really kind of burned out. I just wanted to, I just wanted to talk to people. I wanted to be a fan for a minute and, and, and drop the whole media side of it and stuff like that. And I ended up at my favorite place, which is the sink up on the hill. It had some beers, had a really one of the best pizzas in, in Boulder is, is there at the sink. And I watched the Texas-Alabama game with a bunch of other Buff fans. And it was just, it was such a great time that day i didn't end up leaving campus until well after 9 30 in the evening so up at two o'clock at campus and walking around by four and then leaving at 9 30. never left campus one time and i ended up that next day actually going to a bus for life event a bunch of our guys were there really supporting bus for life and i'm going to pop that video on friday so watch that these are these are your guys these are your football players supporting one of the best charities for the CU buff. So I wanna make sure that you watch that and, and send some love out to these guys, okay? Cause this is a big time organization that does really great things for our CU buff athletes. Woo, 19 hours on campus guys. And I'm getting ready to do it again because everything starts off super early in the morning on Saturday and the game isn't until that night. And again, I'm not leaving campus. I'm finding every single way I can to stay on campus and bring you content. Or, you know, maybe maybe someone will lend a hand and they'll say, hey, Chris, why don't you come into the athletic facility and we'll give you a tour. I don't know who would do that, but uh, there's lots of time to spend and I'm really looking forward to it. Hopefully maybe even see some recruits coming in. They're having a dinner and reception later that evening before the game. And so maybe I'll try to get them coming in and out as well. That is a wrap from Alpine Garage Sports, folks. I really appreciate your continued support. This is the dream of mine is to follow the CU buffs, report on them, and live my life around CU as much as I can right now. And uh, you guys are helping me make that happen just by viewing. That's the only thing I need. Everything else is on me, and we're having a great time. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. There's a whole lot of content coming up this, guys. Another 19 hours on campus, probably longer than 19 now, guys. I may be on campus for almost 22 hours on Saturday. I will see you in the next video. And if you haven't already heard, we here.